Hi there, Rob Arntfield speaking to you from the Division of Emergency Medicine and the Division of Critical Care Medicine at UWO. This tutorial is on how to use the M-Turbo made by Sonosite and how to properly archive your studies using this machine. The M-Turbo will be appearing in all the emergency departments in our hospitals and will soon be populating all of our ICUs as well. This tutorial is designed to help you take your existing ultrasound knowledge of the important operations like depth and gain uh, and apply them to this new machine. As well, this tutorial will show you how to archive and save your exams on the M-Turbo. Archiving your work is now a mandatory component if you are using point-of-care ultrasound in any of the emergency departments or ICUs at LHSC or St. Joe's. As you know, the two main controls most helpful to you in ultrasound on any machine are going to be the depth and the gain controls. Let's see what these look like on the M-Turbo. The depth is fairly straightforward, featuring a decreasing depth button here and an increasing depth button here. The gain, found on the left side of the uh, dashboard, uh, consists of a near field gain, that is gain in the upper half of the screen, and a far field gain. Uh, gain dial that will control the gain in the lower half of the screen. The overall gain dial is here which will be more similar and more familiar to many of you from previous machines that have a single gain dial. In general this will be the dial that you'll use however as your eye improves and you recognize that there may be gain problems that are regionalized to the upper half of the screen or the lower half of the screen the near field and far field gain dials will be uh, more helpful to you. The auto gain button, while encouraging to allow the system to select the appropriate gain for you, um, I do not think is a generally helpful tool and I've never found it to be helpful and I don't encourage you to use it or to rely on it. All of our M-Turbos will have three transducers connected to it at any given time through a triple connect system. Switching between them, you simply press the corresponding button on the triple connect system to alternate. You can do this at any time during your scan. Now before actually scanning anybody, you must create a patient encounter. Yes, I know you'd rather start scanning, we understand that, however this step does not take long and is critical towards the quality assurance component which as mentioned is mandatory. So we've made it as easy as possible, you'll see on the dashboard here there's an A and a B button, both of them create the same function and that is to open or close a patient encounter. So to open a patient encounter you press either the A or the B button. This will then bring up a screen of patient demographic information which at first glance looks a bit overwhelming and looks like you might have a lot of work to do. The good news is you don't. You just have to put in the patient's PIN number in this ID field here. You can either press tab to tab down to it or use the trackpad to scroll down to it. And then your name, the scanner, goes in the referring doctor field. Now it's not actually your name that you put there, it's your Cerner login. Typically something like your last uh, name or the first seven letters of your last name followed by your first initial and that goes in the referring doctor field not the reading doctor field. If you want to think of it, uh, just think of it that you would refer this patient for a point of care ultrasound uh, and you will then honor the referral by doing the scan yourself. To see what this looks like, here I put in a patient's PIN number in the ID field and my name, my Cerner login, that is in the referring doctor field. If ever you're being directly or indirectly supervised by an attending physician who's helping you train or you're simply under their supervision, um, I would encourage you to put their name in the reading doctor field and your name in the re referring doctor field. If there's many of you at the bedside doing a scan at the same time, either for educational credit or simply because it's an interesting case, you can separate your names in this referring doctor field by a comma and all of your names will be transmitted to the back end server where the images will be then linked with your proper full name and your user account. So now you start scanning and you start capturing some interesting images such as this one here of cardiac standstill. You are going to change your management of this patient based on this image so you rightly decide you want to capture it. How do you do this? Well if you find the trackpad in the center of the dashboard, immediately to the right of the trackpad you'll see two buttons, the clip button and the save button. The clip button corresponds to saving, as you may have guessed, a clip, typically a short movie somewhere between four and six seconds depending on how the preset of the machine has been designed. The save button 
it's important to recognize it doesn't save clips, it saves stills only. So still images in the form of JPEGs. You can press this while scanning live, it will capture exactly what's on the screen at the time that you press it. Or if you're more of a perfectionist, you can press the freeze button and even scroll through the past several hundred images in the internal memory of the system on the trackpad and find just the perfect shot before you press the save button. It is expected that you will save clips or stills that are representative of the images that you use to make your clinical decisions. We do understand it's not possible to capture all of the information on the ultrasound system during a complete exam. Representative images will suffice and this is generally how any archiving goes on in radiology or cardiology as well. So now we've shown you how to save your images. Now the question remains when you save an image there's no immediate way for anyone who might be reviewing your images later, either as part of education or quality assurance, to know how you interpreted your images. After all, we do have a paper-based charting system, unfortunately, still, so the report that you will have generated in the patient's chart, because all procedures, including ultrasound, do require a report uh, to be issued if they're going to change your management, we have no way of accessing that in an easy fashion. It's very cumbersome, it's time consuming, and it's expensive. So we designed a system where you will annotate the uh, clips or still images you will save, and that will tell us what you thought of the images. For instance, in this image of a small uh, pericardial effusion anteriorly, with no text on the screen, we have no idea whether you saw this or not. So as by way of counterexample, we see this image here of a pleural ultrasound with B lines extending from the pleural line, suggestive of congestive heart failure, and we see B lines has been typed in on the screen. Let's see how this is done. There's a text button at the bottom left of the keyboard. Press this at any time, and that will mobilize a cursor on the screen display. You can then type freely uh, anything to do with the findings, so such as positive for free fluid, uh, indeterminate, best exam possible, um, or any other descriptors that you think might be helpful, such as the mechanism of injury, uh, anything else that you think is, is relevant to the exam. We can see here in this image, you can actually see what it looks like as this was typed on uh, during the clip being saved of the IVC in this patient. Um, now it's important to note that because the bulk of our scans are actually normal findings and uh, negative exams, the default presumption is that if you did not type anything on the screen, that it's a negative exam. So good news, that's a uh, work-saving step for you. So if you have a normal fast exam, for instance, you save your images of the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, and pelvis, and simply no annotation is required. If we saw a slip of free fluid in the, your images you, you saved and there is no text on the screen, then that would trigger a discrepancy. And that discrepancy would be, uh, you would know about this by getting an email follow-up uh, asking about whether or not you saw the free fluid. So if your exam is normal or negative, you needn't type anything on the screen. If it's positive or there's other descriptors and qualifiers you wish to communicate, please annotate them on the screen by typing them in. Lastly, you're now done your exam. What are you going to do? Just close the lid and walk away? No. You're going to press the A or B button, which again will end the encounter just as it works to start the encounter. So press the A or B button to finish your exam. That will then uh, conclude the encounter and will trigger the machine to send your studies, the clips you've saved or the images you've saved, over to the wireless archiving to be reviewed either by you or and or by somebody to do quality assurance and education rounds. The archiving requirements we've just reviewed are part of a more global system called QPath, which is a wireless archiving system that is uh, quite exciting and will allow you as the scanner to review all of your studies, to export them to a disk anonymously, to email them, um, and to comment reports on them, uh, any number of things, as well as to keep a portfolio um, should you require one for educational or, or competency reasons. There will be a separate screencast that you'll be able to see shortly that will go over how to use this software uh, to its capacity and how others will be using it to help advance our ultrasound curriculum. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks, and happy scanning.